On debate number two, we say good evening to Ami Yagnik of the Congress, GVL Narsimha Rao of the BJP, Zafar Sareshwala joining us from Mumbai, a businessman, and he's got very strong views about this uh, entire debate. Arima Sundaram, senior advocate of the Supreme Court and sitting with us in the Mumbai studios here, Selesh Gandhi, former CIC and RTI activist. Sir, first to you. Why not? Why not make it compulsory? Because I'm going to quote what H.S. Brahma said. 28 crore people did not cast their right to ballot, right to vote at the Lok Sabha elections. Unfair, isn't it? Because the country that you live in, the constituency, the state, the city that you live in, if you're not bothered about who runs it, who governs it, and if you don't want to cast that right, it's unfair. I, I think basically one has to understand what is democracy all about. It's a celebration of individual government of the rights. people for no, the people no, that's by right. the people no, apart from so if which, the people don't want to no, no, just, be involved just, just just let me finish this the fundamental of democracy is the concept that each individual citizen is a sovereign and she gives a part of the rights to the state to get a governance two freedom of expression means freedom to refuse to express also you cannot say that we must all express ourselves everywhere Therefore, these are fundamentals, this is against the constitution, against basic tenets of democracy. And for a moment, let's assume we say that, no, no, that's, we want to take a different position. Has anybody thought of the practicality of this? Supposing we have, at the bare minimum, even 10 to 15 percent people who don't vote. 10 to 12 crore people. There is no government mechanism that is capable of punishing these or doing anything. There are about 23 countries worldwide which have got such laws, yes. only about 8 or 10. And these are countries with very small population hmm. which are enforcing it. The rest don't enforce it. India has a great, great tradition of making laws which we don't follow. I don't think this is a very good idea to make a law which everybody will defy and not See, you, the, the point you raise is very valid of being able to actually implement it. And we'll come to those sort of logistics of how can you penalize 28 crore people in a minute. But I also want to get uh, Mr. Uh, Arima Sundaram on this. Um, the issue of constitutionality. Do you think this would be unconstitutional? And tell us why. Well, I certainly believe it would be unconstitutional because let's start with the first premise. Uh, the right to vote is really a statutory right. Uh, it is a right given to every citizen, a voting citizen of certain age, to exercise. Now, there is no fundamental duty which is a mandatory duty under the Constitution. In fact, the Constitution under Article 19.1a gives the right of uh, freedom of speech and expression which includes within it the right not to speak, not to express yourself. Nobody doubts that for a good democracy, every voting person, every person eligible to vote should vote. No one doubts that I, for one, never miss my right to vote. But that does not mean that just because I feel this is a very valuable right which I want to exercise, everybody else should also exercise it. That is fundamentally against democracy. To insist that somebody else does something which you believe is right is, uh, is totally against democracy. It's a different thing to restrict somebody, prohibit somebody from doing something which infringes somebody else's rights or hurts other people. That you can definitely statutorily do. But how is it that in a country where we have fundamental rights and these rights are to be enjoyed by the public, can you impose on them a duty which is not found in the constitution? I but, want to give you one example. Yes. You know, years ago in Kerala, there were some students who did not salute the national, uh, did not sing out the national anthem. They stood up for the national flag, but they refused to sing the national anthem because their religion wouldn't permit it. Justice Chinnaparedi in the Supreme Court, speaking for the bench, so beautifully put it as religious tolerance or tolerance of any nature runs like a thread through the Indian constitution. And he said, Nobody can force these students to stand up and sing the national anthem. Of course, a person can be prevented from insulting the national flag, which they did not do. They stood up and respected it. But nobody could force them to sing the national anthem. Now, please tell me, what is the difference here? You want a person to come to the polling booth and say none of the above. Hmm. So what is it? You want to mandatorily make him come to the polling booth. It's not that you're forcing him to vote. He can come and say none of the above. 
So Correct. I do not understand the purpose of okay. this. So what's See, wrong with that? We do something to encourage people we, to want to come and vote. You can't force them to okay, do it. Okay, Mr. Sundaram, I just want to understand this better before we go across to GVL Narsimha Rao. Now, uh, for example, just help us understand this. The income tax is not something that's enshrined in our constitution. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it is a violation of law if we don't pay income tax, if we fall within that relevant slab. Uh, what's wrong, therefore, with the mandatory voting law? Because it is for the larger good. We can't deny that something like this would essentially be to make sure that there's people coming out and voting and we don't see those very disappointing 45% voter turnouts, things like that. Therefore, why is this wrong? Allow me to just correct you here. Taxation finds its source in the Constitution of India. Okay. The Constitution of India provides for taxation. And statutes are made in accordance with the Constitution. The fact is, our Constitution does not mandate a duty on a person to discharge various functions. It prevents a person from doing certain things which he ought not to do. It grants rights to a person and it allows the state to restrict the exercise of those rights. Now, unless you are going to find that it can be constitutionally done, and if so, whether it would constitutionally be still be upheld hmm. in, uh, in uh, the light of the fundamental rights, unless you find that constitutional duty in the constitu uh, <coughs> uh, ingrained in the constitution, how can you have a statute which provides for it? Okay. No, but 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 but, but Arima Sundra, going beyond going finds beyond its source and support in the Constitution go, of India. Go, going beyond what the Constitution at Constitution can be amended, thought can be amended, it can be changed depending upon the need of the hour. GVL Narasimha Rao, tell us why the BJP wanted to make this compulsory for the local body polls. Is it the reason why that uh, across your cities in Gujarat, the the overall turnout for elections has been less than forty percent or somewhere somewhere around that number? And do you want? And uh, that's a larger question. What's the logic here? Do you want a majority to come and exercise their right to, to, to decide who governs them? Or because do you believe it's unfair? And that's where I'm putting out this question. It's unfair that a government elected by 20% odd voter base comes out and, you know, uh, governs the, the, the remaining or a civic body which has been elected by 20% of a voter base comes and runs the civic authorities and, 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 the, and the civic facilities. So for, be it local, regional, national. Don't you want a majority, 80%, 90% plus, to come out uh, to, to choose who, who governs them? I think, Anand, <clears throat> the philosophy is for a representative democracy. I think it is important that the citizens participate in the voting process. And uh, uh, I think though it is called, though we are all discussing this as compulsory voting, look at the spirit of the law. The law is actually, uh, uh, I think, meant to create some, inculcate some kind of a duty, some kind of a civic responsibility in the citizens. So, depending on how yes, you approach it, with what Mr. Sort Rao, of, that uh, nobody is contesting that. You approach, okay, there may be some arguments contrary to no, that no, also. But one second, contested. the question here is so, of democracy. So yes, we no, want no, to see ninety percent voter turnout. Come on. We want to see hundred percent voter turnouts. The question that the guests here are raising is one of the fundamental right to freedom of expression and speech. Is this not clamping down on that right? Can because I? included in the freedom of expression is the freedom to not express if you choose not to I think none of us in the panel is competent to really say how what Supreme Court will eventually how this will how the uh, how the super, Supreme Court will judge the issue every case will be judged on the merits That's there is true. interpretation of the Constitution if it was Isn't so that simple, true? I mean, if that it just, just explain the panel like this no but, I, but, but, I but, but first GVL just Supreme explain would not just explain the rationale do. behind making it compulsory in Gujarat but why why make it compulsory in Gujarat uh, that for is what I was trying to explain yeah go ahead no no I'm saying not just the local body elections in Gujarat we believe for, for elections to be representative, for our electoral verdicts to be representative, the electoral participation, uh, almost 100% participation of the electors is an important prerequisite that would en enhance the It's a prerequisite, but should it be forced? No, but should it be forced, the, the the of our Sh Should it be forced? Should it be forced or should it be voluntary? No, you see, 
What about no, free no, will? No, no, voluntary is it's already voluntary. There is nothing that needs to be done. No, I but this will not make it voluntary, right, sir? Mr. Rao, please one second. The fact that the punishment hasn't been decided. I think you are jumping. You are not allowing me here? to speak. What happens here? That there will be some sort of penalty for not voting. I'll, I'll there will be quietly. some sort of penalty for not voting. That essentially means that you, if, if when you make it mandatory, the word voluntary automatically goes away. Is that not obvious? Yes, it is. That's Why are what you I'm asking telling me you. this question? It's obvious. Yes, it is. The idea. So please allow me to speak. Okay. Yes, Jigar Narsimha Go ahead. No, I think you are. Not, you are, you have already concluded. No, go 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 ahead, Jigar Narsimha Rao. Jigar Narsimha Rao. Let me let me openly no, say. I, I was telling you. There, there is a large, there is a large number of our viewers in okay, which the also desirability. The, no, that we need, we need, we need to put in some mechanism where a majority comes out to vote, and there is a fear of not voting. Not exercising this fundamental right because there is a need to do it. But the the logic and the rationale is something which you let have to come across and explain. Go ahead and tell us. Go ahead. Uh, Anand, let us let us examine this issue in a, in a in a logical manner. The yeah. first is the desirability of it, the 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 vision behind it. I have explained to you. The second is whether it is constitutionally valid, whether the courts will strike it down. We certainly don't think so. But if somebody has doubts, let them approach the courts. Let the let the let the high courts and supreme courts interpret this law. We have no problem with that. We think the spirit of the law itself is so so important, and a reasonable restriction, even if it is seen as a reasonable restriction of the fundamental rights, we believe the courts will favor this. Okay. So now the third of point course, is, it's open to scrutiny by the courts. How does one operationalize this? It remains to be seen whether it will withstand the no, scrutiny it is open of the courts. To scrutiny, but we yes. certainly believe the courts will the the the, the purpose uh, and the, the purpose of the law. And and the outcome of it would be so heavily in favor of the society well, that's that the I believe the decide. court would see this as a very yes. reasonable restriction. Yes, but the court. But we cannot we cannot we cannot decide that in this panel. I of think there are not. courts to decide it. Yes. So let let us leave that okay. matter to the courts. Okay. Ami Agni. Okay. Now the, the, the third good, part. One second, it. Mr. Mr. Jivel Narasimha Rao. Just you have to allow Ami Agni to also come into this debate because the Gujarat Congress is the one that's perhaps raised the largest hue and cry over this. We haven't heard that much from the central Congress leadership, one has to say, but the Gujarat Congress has certainly come out against it. What is your main contention with this bill, Ami Agni? There are several. Uh, I think all of them can be branded as main. If you see, it was in 2009 that the bill was sent to the to Her Excellency Dr. Kamla Ji, and she very uh, succinctly put it on the uh, file, the noting that it is violating Article 21. And along with that, there was uh, some kind of uh, uh, noting also that uh, by the uh, Legislative Assembly members that anyone who will not go to vote because it is compulsory will be deprived of certain welfare and beneficial schemes. That bill came back and then again uh, hmm. uh, it went back, again it came back and now it has come before this Honorable Governor and it has got its sanction. The main thing is that why you have to bring compulsion because it does not go with democracy correct why so, so ami agnik ami agnik do you think it is fair for somebody who has not cast their cast their ballot ami agnik just tell me this is it, is it okay for somebody who is not bothered to even to decide not bothered to even see who's their local corporator who's been voted who's come out and uh, who's been elected to come out on the streets and stand on a dharna saying that oh uh, there is garbage here on this street hmm. these street lights are not fixed the the public transport here in my in my area the roads are uh, roads are bad has he got should that voter should that person have any right to come out and complain say uh, about the overall civic apathy because that person has not bothered to come out and vote and choose the right person. So if that person has not bothered to come out and vote and choose but the right person, person might, should he come out and person, do, a, do an andolan there? That person might be because if that person no, doesn't wait, care wait who, who governs, why should, why should no, no, he be no, no, bothered no, no. about how, it, are, how the governance Anand, is happening? You are con yes, yes. Anand, you are confusing the issues. That how am I confusing the issue, madam? And would like to have accountability from the authorities. That no. is one aspect. The, the, the then, then, aspect then that, that particular taxpayer, then that particular the taxpayer also has a responsibility to choose. No, he, no, has he, has a, right he has the right to elect. He, he has, has the right, right to, to elect. Choose. He has the right to elect, and that right to elect can be exercised by the statutory Either right to go out and vote. I answer. 
No, the statutory right is that he has a right to vote. Yeah. But whether he chooses to exercise that right to go to the Correct. court or doesn't want Correct. to go to the court. So, so when he chooses Those not to exercise the right also. to vote, he not should also choose. He no, should no, also not. not be allowed to choose the right to come out and protest against the person he is yes. not elected. See. Ami will come back to you, Zafar Sarish. Let's, 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 let's bring you in. Let's, Ami will just come back to you. Anyone can go Ami will come back to you. I want to take off, take off on that point that Anand's you talking are about. Confusing the Zafar issue. Sarish you are Wala. confusing the You know, we have a lot of people who say, I don't want to vote. Let's remember that in this particular bill, in this amendment, what has been included is that you will be allowed to prove that you were ill. You will be allowed to prove that you were not in the city or in the state if you miss voting. But there's a lot of people, and we all know enough of them, who don't step out to vote because they don't feel like it, it's too hot, it's, it's too cold. And I think the point that Anand's trying to make here is that don't they have a responsibility to Zafar Sareshwala? And if they choose not to vote because they don't feel like it, do they have a right to complain then about the state of affairs in their city, in their state and in their country? See, uh, ma'am, actually it is about all about rights and duties you have the rights and you also have duties you know 65 years since independence since the constitution almost 60 years more than that now after 65 years when we are known as the largest democracy in the world today you see the appalling voting pattern in our local election bodies i mean that is the the first port of call for our democracy. Correct. The panchayat elections, the councillor elections, and the corporate uh, corporation elections. The kind of percentage, 40 percent, less than 40 percent. Hmm. I mean, what are we then? Uh, what is the democracy all about? At least, if we can't do this much, at least we go inside the ballot box and say none of the others. I would, uh, you know, at the outset, I would say that of course. This law will be scrutinized uh, by the courts, it will test the laws, whatever happens. But I would say that at least the spirit of the law should be taken into account. And have we not had an uh, amendment to the constitution? Yes. Okay. Draconian okay. amendments to the constitution no, have yes. happened. Co coming and to the you, Congress sir. party, let me, let, me, let me put one point. Yes, one sir. point. The, is this Congress party, do they have a gall to say the same party which has come with draconian laws like Tada and Makoka, where they have infringed people's fundamental rights. And they are talking about this law which is showing compulsion to vote. I mean, where is, where is the so sense are of proportion? criminals with all the citizens of the country. Of course. This no, no, you don't talk. What kind of comparison you are making? You have no goal to talk. No, no, what kind of comparison what, you are making? No, no, what kind of laws you have made in the past? Don't use this kind of language, Mr. Parashwala. What kind of laws you have made in the past? The kind of... Ma'am, ma'am, you have made you have made draconian don't amendments shout. in the past. Don't shout. Talk about that. Oh, yes. No, no, no. You shout. You keep. Uh, let me talk first. I have allowed you to talk. So this is about the spirit of the law. You have not allowed. The anchor has allowed me to speak. We should. We should. We should. We. No, no, no. You keep quiet now and let me talk. <laughs> you talk when your turn comes. <laughs> you have to take no, no, the you spirit. Don't bring, you don't take it of off course, the Of course, there are, courts, there are courts, there are institutions which will take. And you don't talk about infringement of people's rights, ma'am. We have seen enough of your party doing with the people, with draconian laws. There, everybody in Tada was not a criminal. You are in Gujarat, you, you are made from people Gujarat criminal you know by about taking it. that court. You are from Gujarat, I know, you know I about know, it. I know more than you. You know about it. I know, I know how you have misused. How you have misused Tada right. for the past 30 right. years. So don't Zafar talk. Sarishwala, le, don't let's talk just, about let's just come back. We are talking about the Gujarat government today. We are talking le, about the Gujarat government. I know right. that. I Zafar Sarishwala, you. You, you made a point. Ah, you have to take RMA the Sundram, of the law. RMA Sundram, RMA Sundram and Selesh Gandhi have been shaking their heads for a while. So we'll go to them one by one. RMA Sundram, you first. Yes, sir. You had a point to make. I think, yeah. Can you hear me, sir? Go ahead, please. Look, it's a very, very simple is a very simple matter. There's no gain saying that democracy wants, wishes for, requires the maximum number of citizens to come and exercise their franchise. That is very, very, very important to a democracy. Equally, a democracy 
also gives the right to choose, not just choose your elected representatives, but to choose your own life, your own lifestyle, as long as you do not infringe the rights of others. Do not forget that fundamental to a democracy, fundamental to a democratic freedom, is the liberty, the right to be able to do what you feel you want to do for yourself, so long as it does not come in conflict with other people. I believe it is an anathema to any democracy to force a person to do something because others feel it is correct. You can always prevent a person from doing something by which he is hurting others. But you cannot force a person to do something just because everybody else feels it should be done. I for one believe that every citizen, every right thinking citizen should go and vote. But I equally believe as a Democrat, I have no but right to tell somebody else, this is what I feel is right, so you better do the same thing. But then what is a democracy? No, but is it sir, not an oxymoron? But sir, there are, there are democracies in the world, as Shailesh Gandhi was also pointing out earlier, Mr. Sundaram. There are uh, countries like Australia, countries like Argentina, Belgium, uh, you know, democracies which do have this mandatory voting rule. Shailesh Gandhi, what do you say to that? I'm not denying that yeah, there are some... bona fide democracies. No, no, I'm not disputing that. But really speaking, the real test of democracy No, I have to is... clarify that, if you would like me to. We'll come back to you on that. Please, uh, we'll, we'll just allow Mr. Gandhi the, to make his point. The real test of democracy, I repeat, is respect for the individual citizen and respect for his choice. I agree with Mr. Sundaram and all the panelists that every citizen must vote. I also believe I should vote. Yes. But voting is but... A small part of participating in democracy. Theoretically, everybody must participate in democracy all along the way. Hmm. Merely voting is just the beginning of it. It may be very desirable that everybody takes physical exercise, but that does not mean the government can make it compulsory. Therefore, and once you start subverting it, Mrs. Afar mentioned. Sir, sir, voting is not a not a physical exercise, but it is a very, very important exercise. I'm you said it is that. the first step, it is the beginning to a step uh, to a participating democracy. So see. if there are people who avoid the beginning itself, they have no business then uh, then no, getting I, getting involved anywhere that, else. That, you, 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 you look at Mumbai. You look at Mumbai, sir. Lok Sabha. You, we were praying that Mumbai the, turns out. They were 55, 56% of 55% of voting. The, the moment the assembly elections happened, it dropped. We were struggling to touch the 50% number. How can a population of 18 million people with a voter base of 11 million people not able to manage, not bother about what happens to this city? May I submit The, the local things? civic body uh, here in Mumbai itself, if I take it, is less than 40%. So now if you want to sit here and crib about the, the, uh, the bad civic facilities and, and mismanagement of, of, of Mumbai, and the fact that Mumbai is not a great city to live in, but you have not bothered to go out and vote and choose the right corporator. Hell, you don't even remember the name of the corporator in your area. Then, then, then there is a problem. And that's the spirit with which this is being targeted. So, is that, is that spirit wrong? I am submitting. Is that let, spirit wrong, sir? Let, let me therefore explain. It is good if everybody votes. I am not disputing that. To my mind, however, it is greater good if they participate, merely voting is... So if it, just, if just it is good that everybody votes, that means it's bad but, if nobody votes. But, but... It's bad if nobody certainly votes. Certainly, if nobody Correct. votes, it's so bad. So, if something that is bad is need, can be cleaned no, just, by just, making a... Uh, getting, that, getting that whip or impetus that they get out of their homes, come up to the voting uh, polling booth and cast that right. If they don't like the candidates, they have the nota button. In which case... Let them say, I don't, none of the above. My, my At least 28 crore people had to exercise their franchise. You <laughs> might have had a lot of candidates who have been elected today not being elected and you might have had repolls uh, because do, people do didn't really, like those Do you candidates. really believe that? Do you really believe that? Why don't... A change well, of course. No, no. I'm, I'm asking you. Of course. You. Don't do you, you want really a change? Aren't you happy that I, you have a 65% no, no. voter turnout just, today? Just, just a minute, Mr. Aren't Anand. you happy? Yeah. Mr. Anand, do you really believe that, let's say, 90% of the people had gone and voted, Bijay would have lost the Lok Sabha election? I don't, really believe. I don't no, know. I'm, I'm just I don't know. It's but, not about it's not about a party. It's, it's not yes. We're it's not about who It's not it's not about a party, Mr. Gandhi. It's not about a party. It's not about who will win the election. It's about 28 crore people not participating in, in, in the largest democracy in the world, in, 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 a, in a participative democracy. 28 crore. To. No. How can they choose not to be involved in the country they live in? That is what I'm saying. That, then, that, then that, that, that is a fundamental spirit. Democracy. That is the in spirit fact, of Mr. democracy. Zafar, in fact, See, Mr. they are Zafar, insulting the spirit of democracy Zafar, by not participating in, in, the, in the voting process, by not bothering to come out and vote. They, they are saying that they are not bothered. Mr. If they are not bothered about this country, then I don't know whether they are, they are truly patriots and no, they are truly Indians. They are, they are bothered. Just a minute. Mr. Zafar, in fact, made a charge 
against the other party saying that you have subverted individual freedoms. Mr. Zafar is actually understanding that this is an action of subverting freedoms and this is more a question of at fundamental no, no, levels, no, if no, you subvert no, no, freedoms, no. democracy okay, suffers. No, no, what, I'm I'm, what I'm saying, no, yes. no. Yes. Yeah. What I'm saying is, no, because the lady was talking of subverting, I said they are the ones who started this. So it, but I'm, I've so got a larger issue. We'll finish it. If, if, if in India, no, no, if in India, we are largest democracy and take Mumbai, as you were pointing out, if 60% people don't vote, the kind of candidates we have, then no wonder the criminals will come in, in your corporations and maybe even in the parliament. So we have to do that. So sit down. Answer, 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 answer. This, is, yeah. oh, oh, answer. this is not. This is not. This is not. This is not. No, no. no. He says yeah, criminals come in parliament right. because citizens. Yeah. yeah, don't vote. But yeah. do you really believe it? It is change? true. It is true. See, it what is certain. It, it is true to a certain extent. Nobody sure. here you is can't denying, deny that. You can't deny that. All parties are for criminals. Nobody is denying the fact that the more people come out and vote, the better it is for democracy. Certainly. Nobody is denying that here. The question here is whether a law like this is something that is to be accepted or welcomed into a democracy, or if it goes against the grain of democracy. Mr. Sundaram, you wanted to make a point. Just we'll come back to you now. No, actually, I was just uh, a bit puzzled by the entire debate going around the issue of, you know, 40% only voted, 60% don't, and therefore we've got to get 60% to vote. Now, that itself for me sounds a bit uh, of, of a contradiction in terms. What does it mean? It means the majority did not want to vote or did not want to go to the polls. The minority want them to go to the polls and therefore they will be forced to go to the polls. Uh, it, there seems to be a contradiction in terms here. Let's understand, first of all, that everybody respects democratic tenets. Everybody does. And one of the most fundamental democratic tenets is give everybody the freedom to choose. And the freedom to choose is also the freedom to abstain. And that cannot be forgotten. Don't forget that you have a column, none of the above. Correct. Exercise what does that, none of the Masundra. above mean? Exercise it means that. I do not want to vote for any of them. Now, what does it mean? One moment. What does it mean? It, you're not saying you must exercise the right to vote. You're saying you must exercise the right to come to a polling booth and then say, I don't want to vote. What it seems a complete contradiction in terms to no, me. No, what are you really saying? No, no, that will punish you. No, Arya Masundra, the, the contradiction vote, is, but once it's not a contradiction. Vote, it is not vote. exercise the I'm opinion sorry, when a that none of these candidates above the, are worthy of representing me. Please allow me, please allow me to complete my sentence. Yes, sir. It's no use uh, without my completing yes, the sentence. All I'm trying to say is, if the person comes to the polling booth and says none of the above, meaning I don't want to vote, or does not come to the polling booth and does the same thing, it really amounts to the same thing. Yes. 